Alright, so we've imported the Prong project. Now in this game we will create some simple physics where the platforms here for the players will respond to our commands and they will start moving on the screen and the ball will bounce in between the platforms and in between the sidewalls of the stage. In order to implement that we will need to learn about coordinates and positions on the screen which is a very important idea that I want you to take away from these videos because you will need coordinates for every single game that you will create. So let's move our focus here on the right hand side of the screen where we have the stage and the sprite editor. And I would like you to select the basketball sprite and I want you to fill in the X and Y fields with zero and zero. So notice that the basketball sprite suddenly moved to the dead center of the screen. X and Y are called coordinates and they specify where on the screen a sprite is going to be. The values 0 for X and Y mean the dead center of the stage, both on the horizontal, that's what X specifies, and on the vertical direction, which is what Y specifies. Now, I'm going to focus on the X, the horizontal coordinate, and everything that I'm going to talk about here will also apply for the vertical coordinate as well. So, if I change this X coordinate instead of 0, if I set it to 50, notice that the basketball moved 50 steps to the right of the center of the screen. The further I want to go, the greater I have to make X. So, if instead of 50 I do 100, Notice that the ball will move further to the right. So let's set x back to 0. If I want to go left from the center of the screen, I'm going to have to make x a negative coordinate. So I will have to make x negative 50, for example, with a minus sign, and the ball will move, as you notice, left from the center of the screen. The further I want to go left, the more negative x is going to be. So if I do instead of negative 50, I do negative 100, the further left the ball is going to be from the center of the screen. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to set x back to 0 again, and I'm going to go to the code section, to the motion section in the code, and I'm going to bring in this blue change x by 10, and bring it into the open space. If I just click this block, the ball will change its x coordinate by 10 positions. It will increase x by 10. Increasing x, as you saw, means moving the ball to the right. So if I change x by 10, if I just click it, notice that the ball just slightly moved to the right. If I click it multiple times, the ball will increase its x position and move to the right. Notice its x coordinate has increased to 50. So changing x by a positive value, 10 in this case, will make the sprite move to the right. If instead of 10 I do negative 10, then that means subtracting from x, which means I'm moving the ball to the left in this case. So if I just click this block, notice the ball has started moving to the left until the x coordinate is 0, and if I click the block again, the coordinate will start turning negative. So we'll do negative 10, and then even more negative the more I click on this blue code block. So if I click again, from negative 10 it will do negative 20, negative 30, and so on and so forth. So just remember this, x equals 0 means the center of the screen. To the right of the center of the screen means a positive value, like 50 or 100. To the left of the screen means a negative value, like minus 50 or minus 100. And to move the sprite left or right, you need to change its x-coordinate by either a positive value to move to the right, like this, or by a negative value to move to the left. So move to the right means changing x by a positive value, moving to the left means changing x by a negative value. That's all that I want you to remember. 
Now, as I mentioned, everything that I'm explaining for the x coordinate is also valid for the y, the vertical coordinate as well. So a positive value means upwards from the center of the screen. A negative value means downwards from the center of the screen. So if I change the y coordinate to be 50, notice the ball has moved upwards. And if I set y to negative 50, the ball is downwards from the center of the screen. And the same mechanism for changing coordinates is also valid for the y coordinate. So if I pull in the change y by 10 from the code sections, and if I click on it, changing y by a positive value will move the ball upwards. Notice what I'm doing. And if I change y by a negative value, like negative 10, the ball will move downwards. Now, these ideas with coordinates and movement will be very important because in our games, we'll move all sorts of sprites all over the screen. And we will start by programming our platforms here for the players. So let me drag these code blocks wherever they came from, so to make them disappear. And let's start programming our first platform. So I'm going to click on this red down bar, and I'm going to pull in my first block. So I'm going to go to events, this yellow section, and I'm going to drag when flag clicked. I'm going to zoom into the code so that the code is clearly visible on the screen. So when the green flag is clicked, I want the red bar to be responsive to my left and right arrow keys. If I move my left arrow key, I'm going to move the bar to the left. That means decreasing the X coordinate or changing it by a negative value. And if I press the right arrow key, I'm going to change its X coordinate by a positive value. So let me go to the control section, the orange section, and I'm going to bring in the if block. So if the right arrow is pressed, then I'm going to change the X coordinate by a positive value. So I'm going to go to sensing here, the light blue section, and I'm going to drag in this diamond shaped key space pressed, I'm going to snap it inside. And instead of space, I'm going to change that and select right arrow. So if the right arrow is pressed, then I want to change the X coordinate by a positive value. So I'm going to go back to motion, the blue section, and I'm going to bring in the change X by 10 block. So when the green flag is clicked, if the right arrow is pressed, then change X by 10. Remember, changing X by 10 means moving 10 positions to the right. So let me click on the green flag and press the right arrow key, but nothing's happening. Now, why is that? Now, the reason is that the computer is very fast. When I click the green flag, the computer will very quickly ask, is the right arrow key pressed? Well, at the time I click the green flag, I'm probably not already pressing the right arrow key. So the computer will very quickly assess that the right arrow key is not pressed, so the coordinate will not be changed. By the time I have a chance to actually press the right arrow key, the script has done executing a long time ago. So we need to constantly check if the right arrow key is pressed, which we can do by going to the control section and bringing in a forever block to wrap around our if statement. Now the script will go on forever and the computer will constantly be checking if I'm pressing the right arrow key. So let's click on the green flag and validate that. So I'm clicking on the flag. Notice the script has lit up, so it's being evaluated right now. And I'm just going to click on the right arrow key. So notice that as I'm pressing the right arrow key, the platform moved to the right. So let me stop this script and let's add a condition for the left arrow key. So I'm going to right click on this if block and I'm going to click duplicate and I'm going to put it after the first if block. So I have an if for the right arrow key and another if for the left arrow key that I'm just selecting right now. And if I have the left arrow key, I want the platform to move left. That means changing X by a negative value. So I'm gonna put negative 10 inside. Now, if I click on the flag now, 
the computer will constantly be checking if the right arrow key is pressed and if the left arrow key is pressed. So that when I click on the left arrow key and the right arrow key, the platform will start moving left and right. So this is pretty cool. We already have a controllable sprite on the stage. Now we can make use of this exact code for the top bar as well. So I'm just going to drag this code and drop it onto the up bar sprite, which will make this code duplicated in the up bar sprite as well. So both the down bar and the up bar will have the same code. Now when you select the up bar sprite, make sure that the keys to which the up bar will respond are different from the right and left arrow keys. So I'm going to change the right arrow to have the D arrow key pressed and the A arrow key instead of the left arrow. So the up bar will be controlled by the keys A and D for the left and right and the down bar sprite will be controlled by the left and right arrow keys. So now if I stop the scripts and click on the green flag again, both bars will be controllable. So with the left and right arrow key for the down bar and the keys A and D for the up bar as well. So both players can control both bars. All right, so this is pretty cool. We already have two player controls for the up and down bars for this game. The next thing that we have to do is to control the ball, which will move in between the platforms and in between the sidewalls of the stage. So I'm waiting for you in the next video to teach you how to do it.